Hello, everyone. I am Martha Mallon, Senior Director of Global Partner Marketing for Impinge, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the DataMars webinar, Remotely Manage and Monitor All Your RFID Devices with Storm, hosted by Impinge. DataMars has recently released its new Storm device management platform, and today we're going to learn how the single platform leverages the flexibility, performance, and edge computing capabilities of RAIN RFID devices like the Impinge R700 Reader. Today's speakers are Julian Burroughs, Director of Product Management at Datamars, Andrea Carbonetti, Head of Software and Data-Driven Solutions at Datamars, Christian Zershens, Senior Channel Manager for EMEA at Impinge, and we have Jose Garcia Perez, Pre-Sales Solution Engineer at Impinge, who will be here to help answer any technical questions about the Impinge products. We encourage you to submit questions at any time during the presentation through the questions feature on your GoToWebinar control panel. We will present questions to the speakers after each section, and we'll have an extended Q&A at the end of the presentation. We also encourage you to stay to the end of the webinar when we will present a special offer from Datamars. Three lucky winners will receive a one-month free trial license of STORM, so make sure to stay with us to get all the details. So, Without further ado, let's get started. Julian, the floor is yours. Thank you, Marta. Hello, everybody, and um, thank you for attending this uh, webinar. Uh, before we start with the hot topic, a few words about Datamars for uh, people who don't know the company. So Datamars is a data solution company. Uh, we are focusing on uh, developing, producing, and selling high-performance RFID uh, solution for the animal market and for the textile market. Uh, the company is based in Switzerland. Uh, it's been created 35 years ago, and we have a global footprint with 30 subsidiaries and a little bit less of 2,000 people. Um, the company is uh, built on three business divisions. I would say two business divisions focus on animal identification. One is livestock, the other one is pet identification. And the third division is the uh, textile identification division focusing on industrial laundry. And that's the division uh, that is, I would say, sponsoring this, this webinar. Um, a few numbers. Uh, we invented uh, what we call the laundry chip based, uh, that was back, sorry, in uh, 1990. Uh, it was actually the first RFID transponder that was washable. Um, at the time, it was in low frequency, so it was an LF transponder, and it was targeting mainly uh, the workwear industry. Um, we kept on developing the technology. Uh, we are now the leading uh, supplier of RFID solution for the textile laundry market. We are at our fourth generation of UHF transponder. Uh, we serve 65 countries. As we speak, uh, there is probably around half a billion of our transponder in use, and um, we installed over 10,000 uh, reading points. Um, now, um, looking at the, the, the market we, we serve, uh, let's see the next slide. So we are used to, div to divide our activity into uh, four uh, main markets. So the laundry serving the uh, healthcare business, so uh, hospital, for example. Uh, laundry serving uh, the industry business, which could be, I mean, the industry, which could be a uh, large automotive manufacturer, for example, uh, but also a pharmaceutical company or food and beverage. Uh, laundry specialized in elderly homes. And uh, finally, uh, the laundry serving the hotel and resort market, so uh, hospitality. Um, our products, yeah, sorry, maybe a few words on, on the type of assets uh, we identified. Um, yeah, the, the, the previous slide. So, uh, yeah, our products are, are used to identify textile, uh, this I said, and these textiles are usually workwear, uh, flat linen, uh, but also uh, mats. Uh, there is in Northern Europe, especially uh, a, a business of uh, mat rental, and, and there is a need of traceability. And then uh, to support uh, the, the elderly home business, uh, private wear identification. 
So looking at our product now, thank you. Um, we position ourselves, we position Datamars as a full RFID solution provider. And uh, by full solution, we intend the transponder, the reading system, and also uh, software. Uh, all our products are based on Impinge technology, uh, and uh, we have been working uh, with Impinge for a, a long, long time. We are good at making transponders that are small, uh, that are extremely strong, and uh, that features uh, eye reading performance too. Uh, small because these are transponders that go in textile, uh, and that will be worn by people, uh, so you don't want them to be noticeable. Uh, you want the transponder also to be strong uh, because they need to resist uh, the industrial laundry environment and that means very high mechanical stress very high chemical stress and uh, finally eye reading performance because to my knowledge the industrial laundry is probably uh, the business sector where the density of transponder is the highest uh, we need to read in very small volume quantity of transponder that can be up to 2000 and that's why we need transponders that are very optimized in terms of reading performance. Um, to read this transponder, we also manufacture a reading system uh, that are tailored for uh, the, the, the laundry usage. And here again, the constraint is to read accurately a large number of transponders without slowing down the process of the laundry. So we work uh, mainly on a reading system, picking up the best components, but also working on the software of this reading system. And that's the next and the last building blocks of, of, uh, of our product. So uh, software solution, here we are not talking about application software, but we are really talking about software whose goal is to improve the performance and the reliability of the RFID system. So uh, here we are mentioning Cloudburst. Cloudburst, despite its name, uh, is not running on the cloud, but it's running on Impinge Reader, and it has two main goals. Uh, the first goal is to ease the integration of uh, the uh, reader inside the IT infrastructure of uh, our customer. And the second one is to improve, thanks to a dedicated algorithm, uh, the, the performance of the reader. Uh, we have made a webinar in the past, uh, still with Impinge, uh, regarding the machine learning algorithm uh, we are using in Cloudburst to improve the uh, reading performance. Finally, uh, the last piece of software we have just released is Storm. I will not get uh, too much into details because that's really the topic of this webinar. Great. Thank you, Julian. Now let's hand things right. over to Christian, who will tell us more about Impinge and the Impinge R700 RAIN RFID reader. Well, thank you, Martha, and hello to everyone on this webinar. I've been with Impinge for over five and a half years, and I have the pleasure of working day to day with uh, our partners in Europe, and in particular with uh, Datamars, who is our gold partner. Now, for those uh, in the audience who may uh, not know who Impinge is, I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes to give you a quick introduction into who we are. As you see on this slide, our company's vision is a boundless Internet of Things. Today, most people, when they think of the Internet of Things, they think of a wide network of powered electronic devices. Um, but here at Impinge, we take it further. We think, we think way beyond that. So we are inventing a future where we um, are not just uh, wanting to connect electronic devices, but really every item from our everyday world is connected. So think things like um, retail apparel, packages, um, automotive parts, airline luggage, pallets, medical supplies, food, and much, much more. And it is our vision to have all those items connected to the internet and into the cloud, giving them a digital life and deliver information about these items to the people manufacturing, transporting, selling, buying and using those items. And with information or data about those items, we mean things like uh, the identity of the item, the location and the authenticity. Um, a few data points about Impinge. We have been existing for more than 20 years. Um, and in our, uh, in, in the RAIN RFID space, we are a proven and trusted brand. We have our headquarters in Seattle, in the US, but we have teams spread across the globe, 
We have people in Latin America, a team in Europe and in Asia Pacific. If we look at our product portfolio, and I'll cover that very briefly um, in one of the next slides, we have sold over 4 million connectivity points worldwide and more than 75 billion tag chips. And being the technology leader that we are in our field of expertise, uh, we have, we can say, an impressive portfolio of patents that is uh, constantly growing. And then last but certainly not least, we have a, a large and very diverse partner install base uh, in collaboration with whom we can serve customer needs all over the globe. Now, the way, uh, when I say we want to give a digital life to everyday items, the way for us to do that is through a technology called RAIN RFID. And I'm guessing that many of you know uh, RAIN. For those of you who don't, uh, just a brief explanation. RAIN RFID is a passive, battery-free, wireless technology that enables us to identify and locate many items at a very fast pace and within a range of just a few centimeters up to 10 meters and without the need for tags to be in the direct line of sight of a reader device. The numbers that you see on the slide are from 2021. At that time, we were just north of 29 billion items being tagged worldwide. That's not a small number, but when you start breaking down where we can take this technology across all the different industries, as there are um, aviation, retail, healthcare, supply chain, logistics, uh, hospitality. Yeah, you realize that it's a good start, but it's only a start and there's still a tremendous lot of work to be done. And it represents a fantastic opportunity for us in, in this business. Considering um, that technology, RAIN RFID, I want to briefly talk about the components that Impinge delivers. Number one, we manufacture uh, what we call tag ICs or endpoint ICs. Those are tiny, very small, um, battery-free radio chips. Um, and with small, I mean they're smaller than a grain of sand that our partners then pair with an antenna and add to an item's label or tag and stick it onto an item or a packaging. Secondly, um, Impinch makes reader chips or reader ICs. And those um, provide a foundation for partners to then go and design all kinds of smart edge devices with embedded RAIN RFID capabilities. So simply put, those reader chips will enable other products to become RAIN readers, uh, RAIN handhelds, fixed readers, printers, and so on. And then finally, we make purpose-built readers and gateways that are specifically made to solve very specific challenges and use cases in the industry. And you'll learn and hear more about uh, the R700 reader specifically throughout this, uh, this webinar. Now, we provide those components, those bricks, so you want. It's our partners who then take those products and our capabilities and technology to build IoT solutions that enable um, visibility, automation, and, and information about items to then uh, integrate those into customer applications like inventory management, asset management, shipment verification. So in our day-to-day -day world, this means, for instance, that retailers can check the content of a box that they are shipping without having to open the box. Or if you're running a race, the organizers can tell you what your finish times and what your split times are. When you're traveling, an air airline can let you know whether your luggage is on the same flight as you are, which you might hope it is, and on which belt it will be delivered when you arrive at the airport. So the idea behind, behind all of this is really to help businesses and people engage those items at the time of their manufacturing, through the supply chain, in stores, at point of sale, uh, all the way to people's homes and eventually to the point of recycling. So the aim, aim is to drive efficiencies, reduce waste and enable the circular economy and ultimately making people's lives easier. Now to finish, um, let's have a closer look at the Impinj R700 reader. This reader was released in 2020. It builds on the heritage of our well-known Impinj Speedway reader family. It has a new internal and external design. 
The focus here is really on high performance and reliability. This reader has a much higher read memory and much more processing power than other readers. Um, as you can see on the slide, there's a secure upgradable Linux operating system, new ways uh, to interface with the reader uh, by using our new uh, Impinge IoT device interface. Um, gigabit Ethernet connection is offered, support for additional peripherals and accessories. Um, it uses modern development tools and industry standards, um, such as MQTT. It's available in different models. There is a model uh, specifically for the EU market uh, for use in the EU low frequency and high frequency bands. So that eases deployments in Europe because we have one model that, uh, that serves both uh, frequency bands. We have a version um, that uh, supports deployments in the United States and in other countries that use the same frequency band as the US, such as, for instance, Brazil and uh, China. And then we have a Japanese model. As a side note, um, supports information for this reader, for the R700, but for all our other products as well, can be found on our Impinge support pages. And then to conclude this brief introduction to Impinge and the R700, I wanted to finish with, with some quotes from customers that you can see here on the slides. Those are customers who have deployed the R700. We just think that these, these uh, kind of statements are always more powerful than, than corporate statements and they are a testament to what we, what I was just describing and what we aim to accomplish with the R700. So the R700 is a reader really designed to simplify your RAIN deployments. It's ideal for customers that have complex use cases where there is a need for accurate reading of tags at fast speeds, at high speeds. And the R700 allows you to do that even at a lower transmit power. It also significantly improves the performance of use cases like threshold transitions and inventory management because it enables fast, accurate reading of small global RAIN RFID tags such as the Impinch M700 series tag, tag chips. Wonderful. Thank you, Christian. So Julian, why don't you take a, a few minutes to tell us about the partnership that you have with Impinge. So how long has Data Mars and Impinge been working together? Yeah, as I said, it's a long uh, partnership. I think it started when we moved to the UHF technology. So basically 2010, so over 10 years uh, now. And yeah, since then we have been uh, faithfully using and, and with great success uh, Impinge product, both for the transponder and uh, uh, for the for the readers. So we, we say that the, the textile division of Data Mars entirely relies on, uh, on Impinja technology. Fantastic. So now that we've introduced both companies, let's introduce the STORM data management platform. We're gonna do that by starting with a short teaser video and then we'll hand it back to Julian. Thank you, Martha. So the, the, the first question is, uh, what is STORM? Uh, so we have put some effort in trying to summarize uh, what the platform is about in one single sentence, so let me read it. Uh, STORM is a web platform that allows to manage efficiently and remotely all RFID devices installed in multiple locations. So uh, that's for the definition of the platform. Now let's see a little bit more into detail what problem uh, we are trying to solve with, uh, with Storm. Well, in the last years, uh, we have seen two different trends at our customers. And as I said, these customers are uh, laundry, uh, but they are also a system integrator. And I do believe uh, uh, the, the trends are also common to other industry, I would say. And these trends are on one side, an increase of the number of RFID reading points that uh, RFID manager, that uh, uh, manager have to, uh, to manage. And on the other side, an increase of the production process 
on the dependability, I would say, they have on RFID. So without bad uh, play of word, it was kind of the perfect storm because on one side, you see an increase of complexity, more reader to handle, and on the other side, uh, an increase of critical, uh, criticality related to RFID, meaning that uh, yeah, the, the process were depending more and more on the performance of on the RFID system. In parallel to that, uh, we were seeing that the RFID uh, reading point were still managed mostly on a one-by-one -one basis. So uh, the RFID manager were basically handling the reading system, the reader one-by-one, -one, but they had no overall uh, overview of the system and the idea of storm is really to provide a dashboard that will give you not information about single reading i mean also information about single reading point but able to handle the system the rfid system as a wall um, so that's for the top level definition now uh, let's get into the detail of a few examples of the issue we are finding uh, on the field So, uh, for example, one of the issues we have found uh, uh, quite uh, uh, commonly among our customers is uh, data losses. So, let's imagine you have an operator uh, uh, handling uh, uh, items uh, with an RFID system. Um, the operator will do his, his normal job, but the data is not getting to the main software. The data is not getting to the network. It could well be that you will realize that the data is not going there, and maybe after uh, hours of work, and this work will be basically lost. Uh, what we provide with Storm are solution alarms that are uh, able to basically uh, show that the data uh, is not uh, going where it should, and, and basically alarm the RFID manager and, and to take action uh, against these data losses. Uh, same uh, with downtimes. Uh, let's imagine, for example, an RFID gate that will uh, monitor uh, the, the, the assets that are going in and out a warehouse. Uh, if the gate doesn't work, it's not going to prevent the operator uh, uh, going into the warehouse. But at the end of the day, you will have completely lost the, um, the, 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 the ID or the, the the amount of inventory you have in this warehouse. So in, the, in this case also, uh, Storm uh, will provide way of understanding that the system is not working as it should and to resolve the problem uh, uh, extremely quickly. So that's for, that were two examples related to operation, uh, but uh, there are also uh, examples related to the management of the system. Uh, the RFID system have a certain technology, have a certain complexity, and not uh, all operators are able to resolve issue, to do debugging if something happens. So when you have systems that are spread in different locations, you have to move on site uh, to do the debugging. This is expensive, this is time consuming. Uh, Storm provides tools to remotely debug and to uh, remotely resolve issue without having to go on site. Uh, we have seen also a problem of uh, uh, consistency between uh, reading points. So uh, you installed your reading point, you have very consistent uh, system uh, settings regarding power, regarding sensitivity, for example. But after some times, uh, uh, we have seen that each reading point had maybe its own setup, uh, its own software version and at the end of the day, uh, the consistency of the performance also is not uh, good anymore and you are losing performance. Uh, Storm helps to make sure that your wall reading system uh, is performing consistently as a consistent software version and, and basically to understand where to act and where not to act. Um, that, that's it uh, uh, for, for the, the, the big picture. Uh, now I will uh, hand over to, to Andrea for a more in-depth uh, uh, demonstration of Storm to get into the features and the functionality of, uh, of the tool. Thank you very much, Julian. Hi, everyone. Um, so yeah, today uh, we uh, prepare a live demo so you can see what the functionalities of Storm uh, are. 
um, we basically go through the main four. We group these functionalities into four groups about monitoring, configuration management, preventive maintenance, and remote support. So let's switch to the live demo. Okay, um, I hope everybody can see my screen. Uh, so here we are after you log in into the Storm platform, which is a web-based platform. So the only thing you need is a web browser. After you log in, the first thing you see is a dashboard. The dashboard is not meant to be the replacement of any productivity software that you might already have in place. Uh, the dashboard basically gives you uh, the ability to uh, to be customizable, so you can add as many widgets as you want. And uh, on one side, we have uh, what I call status widgets that allows you to, at first glance, to see if uh, all the readers are up and running, where there is any warning, any alarm, uh, devices are waiting for uh, provisioning, which is basically the process where we add devices to the platform, or there is any software update available for uh, the devices you have installed. Uh, and then we have the metrics widgets. Uh, in the metric widgets, you can easily uh, customize them to show uh, data coming from readers in a specific location or from all the locations. You want to see the number, average number of readings or the every single count and see over, uh, over a week uh, to see the average uh, for an hour um, bin uh, of data. Um, so this is part of the monitoring. This is the first uh, tool that we give you to monitor your RFID devices. Um, once you select the manage device window, you can uh, uh, select your devices and here you can easily uh, configure the alarms. Uh, Julian mentioned the alarms already. Uh, the idea is that Storm monitors 24-7 all your devices that are connected to the platform. Uh, we have different kind of alarms. I'll give you one example, uh, the status alarm. The status alarm basically tells you if the reader is online or, or not. So if a reader goes offline on a window, a time window of 30 minutes uh, between, let's say, 5.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. When, when people are working and nobody works over the weekends, I want to get a notification. The notification will be sent to the email address or addresses you, you specify here, as well as shown up here in the user interface. So I set up this demo with a reader uh, that is uh, showing an error. And so it tells me that this reader here in Data Mars HQ has a communication error, and that happened on Tuesday at 5.15 p.m. Um, so these are the two main tools that we give you to monitor your RFID uh, systems or devices. Uh, and as you have seen, we have different kind of alarms that you can set up uh, according to your needs. For example, once you look at the dashboard, you can easily see that, okay, uh, on average, we read a little bit more than 220,000 uh, tags every hour. So I can set a threshold right below. So if something good, bad happens, like somebody stumbles into an antenna cable and disconnects it, the reader is still on, is still uh, connected, is still online, but it doesn't pick up any tag which, because the antenna is not connected anymore. And so you want to be uh, notified that something is uh, wrong and, uh, and the system is not picking up any tag. Uh, now, let's talk about uh, device management. What do we mean with device management? Um, here you have the list of all your readers. Uh, these are the readers that are currently linked to my account. Okay? Um, you might have hundreds of readers here, right? So how do I select the readers I want to work on? Um, here you can easily search and type whatever keyword helps you to filter out the list of devices. So for example, now I want to see the devices that are in Datamars HQ. So I start typing Datamars and the system automatically filters my list and shows the devices that are in Datamars HQ. Um, I can save this search as a favorite, so my favorites, okay, and it will show up here. So next time you need you log in and you need to 
do something on, on these readers which are in Datamars HQ, you can just click your favorite and immediately the system will filter them out. Um, when we started designing uh, Storm, one of the requirements was to have some uh, groups so that devices can be grouped uh, in and easily uh, uh, find out the, the right group you want to work on out of hundreds of readers. We thought that having stating groups was kind of a limitation because every time you add a new device to a group, uh, then you need to manually add it to the group you previously created. In this way, uh, the system will, because it, it runs dynamically on the, on the uh, reader properties, the system will automatically filter out and so the new device that you added in Datamars HQ is automatically added to this group here. Um, once I um, select my devices, here you see uh, different details. Um, we talk about filtering. Uh, there are some details you see in this window here. In, uh, for example, you see the site name and the address. This is part of the of a concept we introduced into the platform, and which is about location. Uh, because, as Julian said, uh, the the goal here is to provide you a tool that allows you to monitor, manage readers in different locations, potentially all around the world, right? Um, so, through the platform, you can manage your locations, and here you see that. Uh, on my account, I have five different locations and I can see how many devices are uh, connected in each location. So this is a very important step and process uh, so that your platform uh, remain uh, clean and, and suddenly you don't have a, a lot of readers but nobody remembers or knows which reader is where and does what. Um, Every reader can, uh, by clicking on the reader name, you can see the details of this specific reader. So the full address, uh, the reader name, uh, you can see information about the reader, like uh, the, the software version of the firmware version, uh, the license, uh, you can create configuration presets or apply a new preset. And you can also see the live read. The live read allows you to see live the readings coming from the reader, okay? So here, I should have some tags here on my desk. Uh, probably it's not reading anything. We'll change the configuration and say afterwards. But here you can see uh, the readings that are coming up from the reader live. Um, let's close this, okay? So once I select my, uh, my devices, I can click here and change the configuration. And maybe uh, the reader that was not reading any tag uh, had a problem and the power was too low. So here I can increase the power. And let's say that I wanna apply this change to all these readers. And with two clicks, the platform immediately applied to all the readers, this new setting and configuration. So let's see and check if now we can pick up the tags Okay, here we go. So yeah, we had a problem. The power was too low, okay? And so in a matter of a click, I changed this configuration to all these devices that are potentially installed everywhere around the world. And through the platform, the configuration has been pushed to the device. Um, it's easy to compare uh, different configurations. Uh, so, okay, we see that these readers here have uh, antenna to enable, but these other, yes, these other ones are do not have it. Uh, here we have access to all the parameters available through uh, the reader. So RFID settings, uh, reader settings, such as reader mode or uh, search modes, um, control over the GPOs or data filtering, and all these parameters are available on the reader can be managed through store. Um, you can also customize your view. Uh, let's go back to antenna settings and let's say that um, my readers uh, are only two port readers. Okay, so we don't care about antenna three and four, but instead we care about population estimate. And so we wanna add population estimate as well as reader modes. Okay, and this is my customized view that I can now save and uh, as a favorite, so Andrea's view, okay? And again, uh, like we have seen before for the uh, dynamic groups, if I then 
uh, go back and, and re-enter into the configuration window, I can click on my favorites and my custom view is immediately applied. And here is the set of configuration or parameters I'm interested, mostly interested in, and I want to check uh, frequently. Um, so yeah, that's basically uh, all about the uh, ability to manage the devices uh, remotely. Wonderful. Julian, let's break in for a couple of questions. We have a couple from the audience. Um, first of all, from Scott, uh, do you have a list of compatible devices for the Storm platform? Yeah, we, we currently uh, support uh, all the impinge readers. So that is, of course, the uh, new R700, but also the Speedway Revolution, the 220 and the, and the 420. Great. And here's another one from Robert. Um, how can we add and discover new devices in a distributed environment? Do we need additional hardware? This one is, is for Andrea. Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, basically, the, the idea or the way to add devices to the platform is through a process that we call provisioning process. It's a very simple three steps process. Um, so when you install devices in your network, um, you can add those devices to your account by uh, going to the add devices window. Um, here through the platform, you can create a provisioning token. You use this token uh, to um, link in a secure way your devices. So you put this token into the uh, Cloudburst user interface uh, uh, running on, on the Impinge Reader. And Cloudburst will automatically initiate a provisioning process and show up here as a new device that wants to be added to your account. Um, the user is still responsible to accept or reject the device. Once you accept it, the device is in your account and you can do everything I've shown already. Wonderful. We'll take one more and then I think there's a couple of questions you may answer through the next uh, sections of your demo. Uh, but uh, very quickly, what's the maximum number of devices that can be configured for, or, or associated to a single account? Theoretically, there is no limit to the number of accounts, uh, of, uh, sorry, of readers you can connect to your accounts. Right, All right, we'll let you continue and then I've got some more questions for you at the end. Okay, great. Um, okay, next thing I want to talk about is preventive maintenance. Obviously, here we're not talking about an electrical motor that has some uh, rotating parts and then maybe these parts start vibrating and that's where you understand that sooner or later uh, the thing is going to break and so you want to change it uh, up front. But um, like Julian mentioned before, uh, the goal is to really reduce the uh, the downtime and the data losses and prevent this as much as we can. Um, to accomplish this, we allow you to see uh, all the logs coming from the reader. Uh, so here you can uh, see different log levels, different messages that are coming from the readers and it's easy to spot when uh, there is a reader that has a problem. And if you know, it might might happen that the reader has a has a connection hiccup, and that's not a huge uh, problem. But if, uh, for example, by selecting the error level only, if the platform shows me that this issue uh, happens frequently, then very likely uh, this is not just a glitch, but it's something that is happen uh, happening very frequently, and so I might want to uh, change something. Perhaps I go back to the configurations. Uh, and, and see if there is a misconfiguration uh, in the uh, in the reader or um, check with the IT department, for example, if there is a problem on the network. In any case, we want to give you the tool that allows you to uh, proactively um, solve the issues before they become too big and uh, lead to uh, data losses and, and extensive downtimes. And another tool that we also give you is uh, the update. Uh, we know that more and more the software and the firmware update is, import is getting more and more important. That's because we need to patch uh, bugs or there are security flaws that need to be patched or a new version that brings a new uh, functionality. 
um, it happens very frequently among our customers that updates are still managed uh, manually. And so people are logging in into every single reader and updating those one by one. This is extremely time consuming. Um, so through Storm, the user can pick up a date and time. And so let's say that I wanna sch um, schedule an update for my devices on Saturday at midnight when nobody's working, okay? So I just apply this configuration to my readers. And uh, at Saturday uh, 27th at midnight, Storm will automatically push a command to the readers and tell them to start the upgrading, the upgrade procedure. And the readers will download the firmware and the Cloudburst and start the updating process. Uh, this is all about the uh, live demo. So we quickly go back to the slides uh, because then I wanna talk about um, remote support. What do we mean with remote support? Um, because you now have all these wonderful tools that allows you to monitor the devices, to uh, change configurations, to schedule updates, it's now easy for the RFID manager or whoever is uh, responsible for the RFID installations in multiple locations, uh, this person doesn't have to be on site or doesn't have to be directly connected to the RFID reader to uh, troubleshoot it or to change some parameters. Um, we don't, we, you don't need any remote desktop session anymore. So you don't have to set up a PC connected to the same network, running some sort of a uh, remote desktop tool, and then um, exchange a password and ID, logging into the PC, and from the PC manage the RFID readers because from the web browser you have on your computer without installing any proprietary software, and from wherever you are, you can easily log in in Storm and, um, and fix the issue, whatever it is. If um, you still need additional help because you couldn't manage to fix the issue by yourself, uh, Storm allows to send a request to our service and support team so that we can help you in fixing the issue, give you support, and, 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 and that's it. Um, and I wanna talk, briefly talk about the architecture. Uh, I won't go into any technical detail about the architecture, but it's, it's, this is a very high level architecture diagram. Storm is entirely cloud-based. It's currently running on AWS services, so Amazon Web Services. Um, Storm is connected through the internet to your readers. Uh, the readers shall run Cloudburst, obviously. But uh, everything you need to start playing with Storm is an imprint reader and uh, obviously an account from us, and then you are good to go. No uh, special setups on your network, no uh, local servers, uh, no uh, custom or proprietary software installed on your computers. Because on the other side, you interact with Storm through a very simple web user interface, which is what you have seen right now in the live demo. Um, since we are talking about cloud systems, um, oh, sorry, um, very important points. Cloudburst. Um, Cloudburst is a software layer. Julian said a couple of words about it uh, before. Um, Cloudburst is a software layer that, despite its, by its name, it's running on the reader, on the impinge reader. Uh, so the R700 or the Speedway readers. Um, we design Cloudburst to make the to make the RFID deployment easy. On one side, it takes care of the uh, reader configuration, settings, all the parameters. Uh, on the other side, um, it gives you, or the, the, the ERP or whatever software you're using to process the RFID data, the cleanest data possible. So uh, we have algorithms in there. We Our goal with Cloudburst is to provide you the RFID data uh, ready for your business, basically. Um, the uh, last slide is about security. Uh, since uh, we are talking about uh, a cloud platform, I guess many people in the audience are, uh, have many questions about security. We designed Storm with security in mind since the beginning. 
uh, we don't ask you, we don't ask you to um, open up any external access to your network. Storm works like your smartphone. Google is not asking you to change any setting on your modem at home to check the emails, right? Storm works the same. Uh, there's no need for any VPN or tunnel open. We don't ask you to open up uh, ports on your firewalls, okay? Obviously, all the connections between the readers and Storm are fully encrypted and secured. And this is happening because during the provisioning process, we exchange security certificates with the reader that make sure that uh, each reader has uh, its own access to the platform and no other user can um, manage or log in into, into your devices. Now, um, I hope this was very interesting for you, um, but if you missed something or you wanna uh, see a recap of what Storm does, uh, feel free to check our YouTube channel and, and see the Storm video. Thank you. Fantastic. We have a lot of questions from the audience. I'm gonna start with one that was about security because I believe you answered in the last slide um, from Pedro. Uh, what security protocols uh, do you have in place for the inbound and outbound communications? Um, so I believe you answered that. Yeah, we basically use standard uh, security uh, certificates, so TLS certificates. Wonderful. Um, from uh, Neil, can the Storm platform export date out, data out regarding the tags it was scanned? And if so, what are the export protocols? Uh, the answer is currently not. Uh, as you have seen, we only see the, the readings, so the EPCs, when we open the live read. If the live read is not open, Storm is not getting uh, all the readings from the reader. Uh, then you might uh, think, uh, but then how you see the information on the uh, dashboard? Because Storm, what Storm does get from the readers is the number of readings, but not every single EPC. Wonderful. Uh, we'll just keep going. Uh, is it possible to manage stray reads through Storm, as in create visibility in how stray reads are read by a device and possible fine tune it from there on forward? Um, well, this is a tough one because um, stray reads are usually managed at Cloudburst level. Obviously through Storm, we can um, change the settings and because we have the live read, if you identify that uh, there are some stray reads, you can immediately uh, adjust the settings of the reader. Uh, but obviously, Storm has no clue on whether an EPC is a good one or a stray one. Uh, so that really depends on your application and, and the reading system. And generally, uh, this is something that is, has nothing to do with the, the ability to remotely uh, manage and, and configure the readers. Great. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, talk about one from Impinge. Discuss the IoT. Let's see. Now, what are the use cases or applications uh, that make the R700 possible compared to the previous Speedway generation? Jose, can you take that one? Yeah, of course. Well, the, the R700 was a device that was <clears throat> designed with IoT in mind. So the 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 capabilities that provides are more focused to the IoT interfaces that have and more possibilities of data aggression. Also, it has a increased power output, which is also good to, to reach more tags and uh, have a better uh, detection. And it comes with a sensitivity with, a, with this uh, market leading in, in, the, in the sector, in the RPD readers. So in general, I, the R700 provides much more uh, uh, CPU power and capabilities to for the new generation of, uh, of uh, use cases. Fantastic. Uh, question back for Andrea: Is Cloudburst required for Storm? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Quick answer. Great. Uh, here's yeah. another one that Simple came in one. about Cloudburst. Um, can Cloudburst work behind a proxy and communicate to the cloud? Uh, where does the MQTT come into the picture? Okay, um, yes, Cloudburst can work behind a proxy. Um, the MQTT basically um, 
99.9% of the time, the communication between um, Cloudburst and Storm go, uh, goes over uh, the MQTT protocol. We do have some, some uh, actions, for example, like uh, actually a couple of them only, uh, where the communication goes over uh, um, standard HTTPS requests, for example, the provisioning, since uh, when the device has not been linked to your account yet, uh, there's no way to start talking over the MQTT because that's secured and there's no access to it. So the communication initiates over the HTTPS request and then move on the MQTT. Great, great. All right, here's one from Dan. This is great. How long does it take to develop? <laughs> it's already developed. It's a product. And if you want it, you can have it tomorrow. Yeah, there you go. Great answer. Um, how do you handle child devices? I'm not sure what child devices uh, mean here. Mean, uh, Russell, if you want to extend your question, go ahead and put that into the uh, question panel, and I'll re-ask that. Um, here's one from Dor. Uh, which reports uh, does your software provide? What kind of reporting? Um, again, yeah, not sure what reporting here is intended for, but um, basically we don't uh, create any any kind of reports. Um, we do have the logs that is somehow of, uh, is some some somehow a sort of uh, reporting. So basically, the logs are there, and the persistency is pretty long. Um, so you can search within the logs. Uh, for specific devices or specific messages. Uh, that's the thing we have Then I see uh, closer to a, a report. Great. Uh, here's good ideas are welcome. Sorry, sorry yeah, Martha. Good ideas are welcome. So. Uh, this related question might help uh, extend on that. Uh, can the STORM platform export data regarding the, uh, the tags that was scanned and uh, and such. Yeah, yeah. No, basically the, the, the answer is the same as, as the previous question. Storm doesn't get all the EPCs. Uh, it only does uh, get the EPC stream when you open the library. Otherwise, we don't uh, store anywhere. We don't even receive all the EPCs. Great. Uh, let's see. Um, from Russell. Uh, do you have a scenario where you have a device managing multiple readers and you require an update uh, to a managed or child device? Uh, if so, how do you pass and update the managed device? Okay, so if I understand the child device is something that is not directly connected to store. In that case, uh, if my guess is correct, uh, if a device is not connected to Storm directly, there's no way we can trigger an update on the child device. Gotcha. Let's see. I hope I answered to the question. <laughs> there you go. Um, from Robert, uh, is it possible to integrate the platform with my own software, for example, by the REST API? Okay, this is a good question. Um, currently, the uh, the Storm is not a uh, open uh, API, okay? But this is something we, from time to time, hear as a feedback from the customers. So this is something uh, we would like to investigate a little bit more. So if you are interested in this, feel free to to contact us and and let's talk about this opportunity. Great. Uh, I'm going to, I think this one goes back over to the Impinge team. Uh, what is the difference between running an embedded application versus using an external PC to control the reader? Jose? Well, uh, running uh, an embedded application gives the, uh, <clears throat> the full control of the reader because you are running the, the application from the reader itself. And it also facilitates the deployment and maintenance of the, of the application and also makes you control fully the the operation if you have any problem is the reader the 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 one that uh, can be monitored as data as art is doing uh, in case you are using an external pc the the probability is that you have a, 
an error or a system or network uh, issue is double because you have both system running in, into the network and the, the amount of uh, effort that you need to do to support and maintain the system would be uh, increased. Fabulous. Here's another security question. So back to Andrea. Um, can cloud first work behind a proxy and communicate to the cloud? I think I asked, I think I asked this yeah, question. Yeah, I think I, I did. That I did. Sorry about that. Um, no problem. Uh, is uh, Storm compatible with the Impinge hardware only? Yes. Great. Um, Here's one for you, Julian. Um, probably a little bit higher up. How many people perform the stored cloud, the Storm Cloud team? Uh, right now we are in uh, five person, right? Um, uh, developing developing the platform. Uh, maybe the team will grow. Depends. There you go. <laughs> Related question: Is there a planned roadmap uh, uh, roadmap to develop the storm in, to add more function and uh, 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 to add more functionality? For example, data management of the RFID tags. So, tell us a little bit about your roadmap. So sorry, the the, the um, can you repeat this yeah. one? Is there a planned roadmap to develop storm to add more functionality? For example, data management of the RFID tags. Well, the, the, the focus of Storm is really uh, managing uh, the device. We don't want to substitute uh, application software. We don't want to substitute track and trace software. So every uh, uh, added functionality will go into this direction. Uh, we really want to focus on the device and uh, uh, for what regards the, the tag data, uh, we do believe it's more related to application software. So that's a little bit out of the scope of, uh, of Storm, I would say. Great. Let's see. Um, so let's see if this one makes sense uh, in terms of, I think it was asked early in your presentation, Andrea. So uh, let's see what this might have referred to. Um, so this means we only need internet access in all remote locations to enable remote sites to be available. What also happens when there is an internet failure? Does the, do the readers in the remote location have the base configuration from the main server and can continue to function until the internet is restored? Yeah. Good question. Um, so the, the answer to the first question is yes, you only need the, the internet connection. Um, if the internet connection fails, the reader will keep on operating as it is. Uh, because we have Cloudburst running directly on the reader, Cloudburst takes care of the, uh, of the reader configuration and operation. So even if you shut down the reader and you restart it, but the internet is still down, the reader will restart its operation, no matter if uh, Storm uh, server is not uh, reachable. Obviously, Storm will let you know that these readers went offline, send you a notification and show these readers as uh, offline. Wonderful. Well, we're coming to the end of our um, uh, webinar time. And so we have a little bit more uh, to share with you. Um, and thank you for everyone who, who stayed on uh, with us. And so before we go, uh, we want to have Julian present the details about the special offer. Yeah, yeah, we hope you, 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 like, the, you like the tool. Uh, we hope you have seen the benefit it can bring to your, uh, to your organization and to uh, even help you more to see how great the tool can work for you. Uh, we are happy to offer uh, one uh, month of free trial of Storm to the first three people uh, we're going to email Data Mars, so be quick and uh, email to textile.marketing at datamars.com. Wonderful. So get on those emails uh, and uh, be one of the first. So that concludes today's webinar, everyone. Thank you, Julian, Andrea, Christiane, Jose. Nicely done. And thank you to everyone who joined uh, uh, us for the Data Mars webinar. Remotely manage and monitor all your RFID, RFID devices with Storm.
posted by Impinge. If uh, all registered attendees will receive an email with the archive link uh, in the next couple of days. And we absolutely hope you enjoy your rest of your day. Thank you for all your questions and we really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.